Hello everyone and welcome to the 8 o'clock news. I'm your anchor, Richard Johnson, and we begin the hour by first diving back into the history of our fair city as today marks the 14th anniversary of the event known as The Grinning Man. A time of horror, a time of fire, and a time of tragedy that will forever leave its mark in our homes. Detroit has a bad rap when it comes to crime, violence, and drugs, but nothing is worse than having an arsonist plaguing the streets, destroying homes and neighborhoods with a single match. In 2006, an arsonist managed to destroy a library, a school, an apartment complex, and a nursing home within an eight-week period. The police were using every resource available to locate this sick firebug, but they never found any clues or suspects in the devastating crimes. Two months after the last fire, there was a 911 call that made the news, as the call claimed that the arsonist in question was about to strike, and sure enough, he did. In the call, you can hear the panicked screams as residents of yet another apartment complex fled for their lives and tried desperately to put out the flames. But the most startling moment came when the caller began crying out in pain as he had become trapped in the burning building, the flames scorching his entire body. No one knew what became of the mystery caller, and it was believed that he had perished in the fire. The building was burned to the ground, leaving almost a hundred people homeless. A small memorial was constructed at the ruins of the building in honor of the unknown man who had called 911 and saved many lives. The police knew that arsonists loved to return to the scenes of their crimes, to admire their work and destruction. Setting up a few surveillance cameras at the memorial, the police painstakingly awaited any suspicious individuals who might stop by. It took them nearly three weeks to finally locate a suspect. In the footage of the camera, a tall man wearing a black hoodie and a bandana with a skeletal depiction of the human jaw over his mouth approached the memorial and just stared at the charred ruins of the apartment building. He stared for hours, barely moving and never turning his gaze. When another person began approaching the memorial, he suddenly turned away and walked down the sidewalk out of sight. The man returned night after night for almost a week. Each time, he did the same thing, stared at the ruins in awe and shied away from anyone who approached. But that all changed on the seventh night. A woman was walking her dog and passed by the man. He turned and smiled, frightening her to no end. She reported the strange man to the police, claiming that he was grinning wickedly and smelled of gasoline and smoke. Two nights later, another building was torched by the arsonist. An abandoned warehouse, which still had surveillance cameras running, the same man from the memorial appeared at the scene wearing the same hoodie and bandana. Witnesses to the fire claimed to have seen a man running from the warehouse, wearing a dark hoodie, and the weird thing was he seemed to be smiling, a twisted, almost impossibly huge grin on his face. The police were able to pick up a trail using scent tracking hounds. The dogs led the police to a small, run-down house on the outskirts of the city. Inside was a lone occupant wearing the same hoodie. Aside from the arsonists, there were gallons of gasoline, butane, matches, lighters, and newspaper clippings talking about the series of arson set fires. When the police cornered the man and ordered him to the ground, they were horrified by the man's face. He had never been wearing a bandana. His actual jaw had been exposed, leaving him with a perpetual grin burned onto his face. This man had been the one who called 911 and seemingly died in the blaze. He had been horrifically burned but survived, his face nothing more than a monument to the sickness that is arson. The man laughed a little and looked at the police as he struggled to speak, his lipless grin mocking everyone who dared to look at him. And it was all caught on tape. We warn you though, the following video and audio clip may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. It's about time you found me. I was going to give you guys another call. What's the fun in that? The grinning man was arrested but died from a severe infection before he could even stand trial. Even though he's gone, his actions and crimes will forever haunt the city, leaving scars that will never heal. That's all we have for our time in history, and we will now return to the regularly scheduled program. Thank you for listening, everyone.
In other news, puppies run rampant down the streets of Woodward and East Jefferson Avenue, terrorizing the local population and threatening the safety of the residents. Here's a live report from our field agent, Lucas Adler, who is currently amidst the chaos. Lucas, can you share with us what's going on down here?